Hello, this is Kiwana Talk. My name is Ray Scabori. I'll be your host for this evening's program. Uh, we're uh, we're uh, recording our show at Gary Gardner's office because uh, the school uh, uh, video lab is not available to us in the summer. But we're very pleased to have with us as our guest, uh, Dearborn Police Chief Issa Shaheen. It's nice to have you with us. Well, thank you for having me, Ray. Chief. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. It's pretty cozy here in uh, Mr. Gardner's office. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> we thought we'd take just a little minute and you give us a little background of, of your police uh, background. Sure. So I've had the privilege of serving this community for 26 years. I started in 1998, and uh, that was my first introduction here to Dearborn. I was born and raised in Ann Arbor. But uh, yeah, I've had the privilege of serving for 26 years, and throughout my career, I've had the opportunity to work in every facet of the police department. Uh, in January of 2022, when Mayor Abdullah Hamoud was elected to office, I was appointed as the chief of police. Prior to that, I served as a commander in the investigative division. But yeah, my background allowed me to, you know, it was a natural fit for me to step into the role as chief, and uh, it's been an honor for the last almost three years now. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, a big job because the police department, people don't realize the broad responsibilities of the police department. Yeah. <laughs> police department does a lot of things that people don't think about. I, uh, uh, I was talking to Corporal uh, Dan Bartok, and he, he said last week we were really busy because of homecoming. <laughs> So yeah. I guess that's like a double duty, you know? Yeah, homecoming is one is probably are one of our biggest events of the year. But to your point, Ray, there, the police department, I didn't realize until I became chief, to be honest with you, about just how challenging the job was. And I know what it, is, it takes to be a police officer, but it's definitely a lot. Yeah. yeah. I, I also admire the police when uh, the good fellows come up, they get out there and sell more papers than just about any other group, I think. <laughs> well, hopefully we can keep holding that title, right? Yeah, yeah. we try to do our best. Yeah. The, the, the basic uh, idea behind our show is, is that we have seen a lot of accidents uh, around the area, and, and these are accidents that mostly occur at intersections. And I, I wanted your expertise to uh, uh, explain, explain to the audience how dangerous that is to, uh, to all of us, actually, because we're all out on the road. And yeah. uh, uh, y you can be involved in a, in a terrible accident a couple miles from your house on a trip that you take three, five times a week, you know? And uh, I, I hope we could, we could talk about some of the ways people can uh, protect themselves from that. Yeah, I'd be happy to discuss it. Ray, traffic safety is a, really a top priority, if not the top priority for residents here in Dearborn and for our police department. And so, you know, we've been focused on traffic safety from day one. Um, and so there's a number of things that the city and the police department have been doing, right? So there's been a, a very uh, large presence. There's been a lot of education that's gone out, right? Uh, public service announcements. We've worked with the, uh, our driving schools. Uh, we've even hosted our, our own driving school in the summer, right? We used our school resource officers last year to kind of teach traffic safety to new, newly minted drivers, you know, 16 and 17 year olds. Um, so there's been a lot of education. And then let's talk, we can talk about enforcement. I mean, the police department has written more uh, tickets uh, in the last several years than ever before. Uh, the tickets have been up 100%. And we've been focusing on hazardous moving violations, things like uh, red light violations and speeding and um, stop sign violations. Uh, so there's been a lot of enforcement as well. And then finally, there's been some engineering deployments as well. And you're going to see a lot of it here in the coming months. Uh, and what do I mean by engineering? I'm talking about the kinds of things like speed humps, uh, illuminated stop signs, right, that are solar powered, that kind of just make sure to bring that stop sign to the driver's attention. Stanchions that might be in the middle of the roadway to get cars to slow down. They, uh, they're even exploring the idea of bumping out intersections, right, to get cars to slow down. So really there's three components, education, enforcement, um, and in engineering. But even in spite of all of those things, you really need to be safe when you're on the roads. And so I would always employ defensive driving techniques, and I look forward to talking about some of those. Yeah. I, I, was, uh, I had done a little thing here, and it, it, I talked about uh, basically the same basic topics you talk about, running red lights or accelerate, accelerating at a warning light when it's yellow and then eventually crossing the intersection when it turns red. In other words, going faster than you were going sure. in order to 
beat the light and not really beat it, you know Correct. what I'm saying? And uh, just plain speeding, turning from the wrong lane, uh, right or left or center, in other words, turning, uh, uh, you know, left from uh, right or center lane and turning left from uh, right or center lane. I mean, and people do that. That happens in Dearborn. Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, there's definitely a lot of room for improvement, and, and I agree with that. All those things that you just outlined, Ray, are extremely dangerous. The, you know, the one thing, obviously, let's talk about the driving habits that you can do to try to avoid an accident, right? Obviously, it's a lot of the things that make common sense. You need to slow down, right? You need to be aware of your surroundings. The reality is all of these things that people are doing to get somewhere quicker, very often don't get you there any quicker. How often do you have someone speed past you only to see them at the same stoplight that you both stop for, if you should stop for it? Uh, so none of those things are going to get you there any quicker. But, you know, people need to wear their seat belts to be safe. One of the things that I think is really helpful from a defensive driving perspective, Ray, is that when you're at a light and that light turns green, pause for a few seconds. Make sure that the oncoming traffic is stopping before you proceed in the intersection. You know, I, especially when you talk about those uh, drives that you make every day, you kind of get in a habit and you kind of go into autopilot. You really need to be aware of the other vehicles around you, and I encourage folks to take a few seconds before they enter a sec an intersection that just turned green. Yeah. A lot of people, I don't think they realize what the consequences could be of an accident caused by uh, violating the law. And uh, I mean, all of the things that could happen, I just made a, a little list of them. Ticket with associated fine, accidents uh, with a violator at fault, damage to a, or total loss of vehicle, injury or death, prosecution, loss of license, um, substantial increase in the cost of insurance, if you, and uh, well, I put loss of license at the end there. So uh, I mean, all those I believe could easily happen if if you uh, cause an accident uh, and you were the violator, or even you don't, you wouldn't even have to cause the accident. You uh, you could you could just get ticketed by the police and yeah. and have many of those. Uh, outcomes. Yes, yeah, so like year to date, we've had 14,000 of those outcomes. We've written 14,000 tickets so far year to date. And so 14, we're. 14,000. That's just year to date, and we're yeah. about halfway through the year. Yeah. Yeah, so there's a lot of tickets being written, and those are going to cost you money, and they're going to increase your insurance. And that's the one of the least significant consequences that can happen from reckless driving. And, yeah. and so people need to be careful. And, and really, Ray, it boils down to being considerate to the other people on the roadway. <laughs> so everyone is in such a hurry. Yeah. And so, and, you, and then you combine that with the distractions that we have of cell phones and all these other things, and it's just a recipe for disaster. Yeah. I had another topic that's on the other page. I won't sure. take it out, but basically it's being courteous. Okay? Correct. There's so many things you can do when you're driving to be courteous. A car can be coming uh, towards you, and you're waiting to make a left turn, and they, they pull to a stop a little bit early, so you can make your left turn without having to violate the red light. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. And uh, uh, you really should do that for anyone that's making a left turn. You're supposed to stop for the light anyway. You yeah. Know, instead of racing through the light and then leaving them with a red light, you know. Right. You know, you know, Ray, one of the most leading causes of death for young adults is traffic collisions, right? Yeah. And so oh, okay. it's a dangerous, it's very dangerous out there. And I would encourage parents to have, let's, well, let's first discuss the types of vehicles that people are buying for their kids. Right? Look, my son's name is Yusuf, Ray, and there's no other car that my son would rather have. He's 18 years old than to have a Hemi you know, vehicle that can go fast, a Dodge Charger. But I love Yusuf enough that I'm not buying him that car. It's irresponsible of me as a parent to put that type of car in my son's hands. So I would never do it. I need other people to be responsible as well. Nothing good's going to happen if you buy your young adult a vehicle that has that much power. Yeah. So we can start with that. I also encourage parents, there's apps out there that they can put on their phones, Ray, that will monitor the speeds that their kids are driving. If my kids go over the speed limit while they're driving, I get an alert on my phone, and then I can have a conversation with my son or daughter when they come home. So I would encourage folks to take some responsibility when it comes to the, uh, the vehicles that they're driving, drive, they're, they're allowing their kids to drive, and then, you know, and, 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 and parent them a little bit in the way to make sure that they're not out there putting themselves or others at risk. And every time they leave the house to drive the car someplace, the last thing you say is drive carefully. Yeah, you know it. You know it. You know. And they, they, know they know that you really want them to drive carefully. I'll you tell you, know. Ray, before my, I have, like I said, I have an 18 and 19-year-old, so they've been driving for a couple years now. I distinctly remember 
the moment they started driving. And prior to that, if I was in the middle of something and my phone rang and it was one of my kids, if I was busy, I might put the phone aside and call them back when I was available. Once they started driving, in the middle of this interview, I might answer the phone to make sure they're okay because they're at more risk. And again, I can't stress it enough. The leading cause of death for young adults is traffic collisions. So we need to be careful out there. My, uh, uh, my son, when he, he got his license, okay, uh, I, I worked for a, as a, rep, uh, a salesman, yeah. selling auto parts mostly to Ford. So I drove a, a big Ford Crown Victoria, you know. And uh, after three years, the car would have like 85 or 90,000 miles on it. So the company would sell it to me real cheap. Mm -hmm. And guess who drove it? That was the car that my, that my son got to drive. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a kind of a safe car. Oh, it's definitely. <laughs> well, they, those were our police cars for many years yeah. when I started. Yeah. So, yeah, they're definitely a safe car. And, and not, not a hot car by any means. I no, mean, I, I, yeah, I bet it would. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. yeah very comfortable. And, uh, you know. The kind of car you you be con drive conservatively. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and and uh, both car both both sons uh, got those cars. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, look, you, they could have done a lot worse, Ray, back then, right? That wasn't a bad car for them. Yeah. Well, I, I I got a kick out of seeing sometimes you'd see the uh, the the police uh, patrol cars after they were out of service, you'd see them driven as private vehicles. Oh yeah, they'd know? sell them at auction. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Oh boy! But Ray, I, did you, I understand you had an accident recently, didn't you? I did have an accident. Uh, okay, if I explain the, uh, what happened. Sure, please. Okay, I was going north on Outer Drive, and I stopped at the light at Ford Road, and uh, I looked to the left, and uh, the li light changed green, and I could see that three three lanes of traffic were stopped. I think there's three lanes of through traffic there. Yeah. And they were all stopped. So I started to pull out slowly, and this uh, uh, driver came. He was driving a, an older pickup. He he uh, he came through the right turn only lane, and that lane does not extend across the intersection. You have to you have to jog you, back over, jog to the left in order to continue through the intersection. That probably helped me too because he was going a little bit to the left. But he skinned the whole front off of my, I have a Maverick, and uh, the bumpers are covered with a plastic material. Mm -hmm. It just ripped that right off. But it didn't get, it didn't catch my, uh, the, uh, the actual major structure like, of the like car, in the, in so the, it, didn't the, it didn't hit you in the push door. me yeah. around. But I hit him enough. So his vehicle spun around backwards. His, uh, and I'd say he was going close to 40, I'm guessing. Yeah. His vehicle spun around backwards, and his right rear wheel came off. That went across the road, and hit hit another car. Luckily, it didn't it didn't rise up and go through the windshield. It hit the front of the car and went yeah. over. And uh, so his car kept going, spun around backwards, and bounced up over the uh, right hand curb uh, east of uh, on Ford Road, east of Outer. And uh, the gentleman got out and walked away. Oh, he was he left the scene. You said yeah, wow. he left the scene, but he didn't get too far. I understand you you uh, you apprehended him. Well, I'm glad <laughs> that we were able to take him into custody. But yeah. that is so extremely dangerous. And first, I'm glad that you were safe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you know, when you outline that crash, at times there's things that nobody can do, right? No. And to no. be safe when those kinds of things happen, and and it's really at that point it's in God's hands. And see, so see, actually there. It's a little hard to look at the right turn only lane because you have to turn a little bit more than yeah. 90 degrees. But what you, know? you yeah, but what you described Ray is that all three lanes of traffic stopped and then this car comes whizzing out of the tur lane that's just designed to make a turn. Yeah. And that's so it's right. it's it's just at that point that is just so reckless and out of bounds that there's very little anyone can do to protect themselves. And so well, you need to wear your seat belt and you you know and hopefully you know God protects you because that those are those are very difficult. Yeah, that's the kind of collision that where the uh, the violator uh, is putting uh, the guy that's just going through the green light at significantly more danger than himself, even though he might have a terrible accident. Uh, 
Um, well, correct. Because when you, you get T-boned, I mean, you're yeah. the one. If you're in the car that gets T-boned, you're the one that's going to get yeah, hurt. Yeah, if you get hit in the door frame, and you yeah. know, you're being protected by some sheet metal. Yeah, I mean, the earbags go off, but that's for no. 12 mile an hour. Actually. No, no, it's yeah, not. it's very unsafe, and so yeah. it's it's it is scary to be out there on the roads, and we're doing everything we can as a city and as a police department to try to improve traffic safety. Um, we're not going to let up on it. It's we're focused on it. And we're going to continue the enforcement and, and making improvements on the roadways and trying to educate our drivers. But we need people to t take some ownership as well because that's the only way we're going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Chief Shaheen, we're going to take a little break for, for a couple minutes sure. for a little advertisement. Join us again right after the break uh, with uh, uh, Chief Issa Shaheen uh, of the Dearborn Police Department. It's easy to get caught up in the details, the day-to-day -day grind, numb to the noise, going round and round and round. Deep down, there's something missing, a void inside, a hole to fill, a life lacking. Then, in a minute of clarity, it hits you. The aha moment. You're needed. Kids need you. Kids of all kinds. All these funny, rambunctious, sweet, attention-seeking, vulnerable bundles of energy. They need your love and support. Some have huge life hurdles. Poverty disease, hunger, and they're reaching out for you, around the corner, around the world. You are a Kiwanian at heart, a role model, a guide, a builder of dreams. Together, we are Kiwanis, passionate and strong, ready to move mountains or grains of sand. Imagine every child reaching their potential. The power to help is in you. It's not about us. It's about them. Do you hear the call? Kids need Kiwanis. Kiwanis needs you. Hello, we're back here with uh, Chief Isha Shaheen of the Police Department in Dearborn. And uh, we've been talking about, uh, in the first half, we talked uh, a lot about traffic safety. And uh, Chief, uh, you wanted to, uh, to talk a little bit about, uh, uh, you know, uh, crime apprehension and uh, level of crime. Yeah, I thought it might be a, a good opportunity for the public to just kind of know, check in with them and let them know where we are year to date on our crime statistics as a city. Currently, overall, for Part A crimes, which are the more serious crimes, the city has a 10% reduction overall. And so I'm, I, I'm very happy about that. Now, I knock on wood because we're halfway through the year, yeah. but we're going to keep focused on trying to keep this community safe, and I hope to improve on that, uh, if anything. Some of the areas that have led to that 10% reduction, larceny from autos are down 46%. And so yeah. what is a larceny from auto rate? That is when someone's car is broken into, whether it's parked in a parking lot or uh, in your driveway at night. Uh, so yeah, 46% re reduction year to date in those types of crimes. And those are most frequently the most reported crimes in any community. Uh, and the one thing that the public can do to help keep them, their, their items safe at night is this might not come as a surprise to you, Ray, but the overwhelming majority of those cars that are broken into are left unlocked. So I encourage people to take items out of view, right? Don't leave valuables out in the open, uh, and then make sure you leave your cars locked. The, uh, I mentioned to you uh, at the break that there was uh, uh, some people that uh, uh, tried to break into cars at, uh, at um, Park Place, where yeah. we have our Kiwanis meeting, and one of the vehicles 
was unlocked, and sure enough, they're the ones that lost something. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I mean, it's not, unco it's not uncommon, believe it or not, not, to, not only do people lose laptops and change, but we've had uh, firearms stolen out of unlocked cars. And so you just, again, it comes back to responsibility, if anything, much like driving habits. People need to take a little bit of um, accountability and lock their cars, and, and, and it'll go a long way to keeping them safe. Yeah. And uh, uh, we were talking about the driving safety, somebody who steals a car is probably uh, a bigger risk of an accident than an average person. <laughs> very, yeah, very often. And, and well, another crime statistics that we're heading in the right direction, auto theft is down 20% as well year to date. That's, and so that's I'm great. Yeah, I'm very happy about that. Uh, but to your point, Ray, a lot of times when a car is stolen, it's driven recklessly because they're trying to flee or get away, and so those are a danger to the public. And then again, oftentimes stolen vehicles are used in secondary or additional crimes, right? They'll steal a vehicle and then they'll commit an, a robbery or a, a burglary. And so anything we can do to help reduce auto theft is a good thing, um, not just for that type of crime, but the other ancillary crimes that follow. Well, I imagine they stolen vehicles, some of them still get taken away and everything stripped off them. <laughs> it does happen, and, and, and interestingly enough, as it relates to auto theft in Dearborn, the majority or, or a large number of those vehicles, almost half last year, were vehicles that were stolen off of these storage lots, right? Oh, and so, yeah, so if you've seen around Dearborn, you have these storage lots where Ford Motor Company is storing F-150s or other vehicles with the, well, they're just available and they're easy to steal. But the problem is, is that the insurance companies don't make the distinction between a car stolen out of one of these storage lots or one of our residents' driveways. So the city has worked very hard from a zoning perspective and with Ford Motor Company to do our best to try to reduce those thefts as well. Yeah, I remember there were thousands and thousands and thousands of 150s over in the, uh, in the Ford property area around the world headquarters, uh, behind world headquarters. Yeah, Ford's a great corporate partner and we love them, but uh, we're working together to try to reduce those as well. Yeah. Uh, well, hey, you still drive a lot of Fords. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's a hometown of Henry Ford, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. You bet. Oh, boy. My, my dad did 37 years at Ford Motor Company, yeah. so. Yeah, I've been here a long time, but there was a, a period back, uh, oh, this is a long time ago, might be 40 years, but uh, Ford had some issue with the Lincolns, mm. and uh, these were perfectly drivable, but for some reason they couldn't retail them, so guess what? The Dearborn Police Department drove them. I've do, seen, do you remember that? I've seen some of those pictures, I've seen a few Yeah, pictures. I would I would have loved to have <laughs> been a cop back then. That would have been great. Uh, but yeah, I have seen some of those. Uh, there was Lincoln Continentals. Yeah, big, yep. Link, big yep. Lincoln Continentals. I know. Yeah. yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> Let, let's go back a little bit to the traffic safety and kind of review the things you really should be thinking about, especially uh, when you when you encounter intersections, some uh, give us a list of the worst intersections. Here so at Dearborn. yeah, so we have the. I, I don't. I, I want to make sure I'm accurate here, but I can tell you. I know for certain, Ford and Mercury is one of our most dangerous intersections. And Ford and Telegraph is also clearly another dangerous intersection. Michigan Avenue and Miller, all right, is a dangerous is one of our more dangerous intersections. Uh, Warren Avenue and Chase, yeah, we have a number of accidents there. And those are all the intersections where I would encourage people to proceed with caution. You know, we talked about defensive driving, right? Yeah. We talked about when you're at a red light and it turns green, pausing and waiting to make sure that the oncoming traffic has stopped. Yeah. It's critically important, Ray, when that perpendicular street or that oncoming street have uh, speeds in excess of 40 to 50 miles an hour. Yeah. Because if that person's not paying attention, it's going to be a very high speed collision and the, and the outcomes can be extremely dangerous. Like Ford Road or Telegraph. Correct. Uh, yeah. yeah, these are, these are major. Or even Michigan Avenue, it's not supposed to be 40 or 50, but people are going a little faster than they should be right. most of the time. And, and look, we're going to continue to go out there and continue with enforcement, but you have to also, for a minute, just think about some of these streets we're talking about. Ford Road, Michigan Avenue, and Southfield Freeway, these are major, inter these are arteries that connect Detroit to all the suburbs. Yeah. So you have, the, the daily traffic volumes on some of these streets are over 100,000 vehicles. So you're talking about people from all over Southeast Michigan that travel on these streets. And yeah. so we'll be out there uh, from an enforcement perspective, but we need people to be a little safer. And the main thing is, don't get impatient. Yeah. If you make a mistake like that, just take your time, cross the intersection, go a little farther, make a U-turn and come back. It's not, it's not, uh, you know, a catastrophe. No, it's you not. It, like, we, like we started off with the segment, all of these things aren't going to get you there any quicker. Yeah. And it might not even get you there at all. Yeah. So people need to be safe. Well, the, the police officers 
uh, driving all day long, uh, ma uh, the patrol officers. And uh, uh, I, I'm sure there's a lot of this in their mind because you know they can put the siren on, but they don't. Usually, they're not, you know, driving with a siren. And uh, I'm I'm pretty sure they're they're thinking defensive driving. Well, a they lot too. they they have to Ray because they're in that police car for 12 hours a day out on yeah. the roads. They work 12-hour shifts and they drive in all types of conditions and hazards. You know, rain, wind, shine. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> was it snow, wind, rain, shine? Yeah, any what, condition. Whatever it is. Yeah, the, whatever the, that, that, the post that, office. Yeah, the post office. <laughs> they're out there all the time. And uh, and to your point, when when they need to get somewhere quickly. Right, they might employ their sirens or their lights, but that still doesn't negate their responsibility. Right, yeah. just because they have their lights on doesn't mean that they can't. They have to. They have to drive. They still have to drive safely. Yeah. So yeah, it's a tough job, and I give a lot of credit to the men and women of the police yeah. department. I, I'm I'm sure when you're uh, it's an emergency and you're crossing uh, uh, Ford Road or something like that. I'm sure there's a lot of checking, even with the siren on. Yeah, you, you look know. back and forth, and you have to make sure all the lanes have stopped, because if you have the red light, the police officer still has a responsibility to make sure it's clear. Yeah. It's a tough job. Yeah. Well, we have a couple minutes to go. Sure. It's, it's, really, it's been really nice to have you on here. Well, and, thank you uh, for having you me, know, Ray. I, I have to say that after my accident, I, had a, I would say I had a psychological low for a couple of days. And uh, it was my fall or anything, but I, I said, my gosh. You know, uh, three feet farther out, and I'd have been in the hospital, no question about it. God forbid, you know? yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, I, 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 I don't think police officers get in accidents often, but I, I, I imagine it happens sometimes. And I, I would say the majority of the time it's not their fault, <laughs> you know. But yeah. uh, uh, I'm sure it's a constant training process to... to uh, to, to keep them conscious of the risks. Yeah, defensive driving tactics are one of the things that we train on quite often, uh, regularly, at least once a year, because to your point, we spend so much time behind the wheel yeah. and the dangers are so prevalent, and so we do our best to try to provide the level of training to keep our officers safe. But yeah, um, you know, the one thing I'd like to just, you know, I, it's been a privilege to serve this community and it's been a privilege to lead this organization and, and the men and women that make up this department are some of the finest folks I've, I've had the pleasure of working with. And so I'm very blessed to not only serve this community that's so wonderful, but they work with such a, a number of wonderful people. Well, in this town, we uh, are very uh, appreciative of the police department. And I, I think the police department feels that from, from the community. They absolutely do, Ray. One of the things that I think is so special about Dearborn is you have a community that supports its first responders. You have a city council that supports its first responders. You have a mayor and administration that does. Everyone is pulling in the same direction when it comes to public safety, and not every community can say that. And so I've been here for 26 years, and that's what makes Dearborn special. Well, we're, our time is up. Chief Shaheen, thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. And thank you for calming me down a little bit <laughs> after my accident. <laughs> I'm glad you're okay, Ray, and uh, thank you for having me. Okay, and join us on Kiwana Talk again soon.